In the wake of the Fourth Crusade's thunderous assault on Constantinople, the once mighty Byzantine Empire lay broken, its echoes reverberating across the medieval landscape. As the Latins established their rule, three Greek successors rose on the empire's fringes, casting their aspirations amidst the chaos. Trebizond, Epiros, and Nicaea emerged, each a contender in the enigmatic Game of Thrones that unfolded in the empire's shattered wake. In this tumultuous dance, the empire of Nicaea took center stage, its heartbeat echoing from the ancient city of Nicaea, nestled in the embrace of northwestern Anatolia. Theodore Lascaris, a son-in-law of the deposed Byzantine Emperor Alexios III Angelos, emerged as an unlikely yet determined leader. Fleeing the doomed Constantinople, Theodore found refuge in Nicaea and swiftly rallied supporters to his cause. As the Game of Thrones unfolded, Theodore faced contenders from all corners, Trebizond, the distant dreamer, Epiros, the neighbor in the west, the Bulgarians to the north, and the ever-present threat of the Turks in the east. Battles echoed, alliances shifted like desert sands, and the question of who would reclaim Constantinople lingered in the air. Theodore Lascaris, with the specter of the Latin Empire looming, seized control of the region around Nicaea. A strategic move, fueled in part by the Bulgarians' assault on the Latin leadership in Constantinople. Yet, the road to legitimacy was fraught with challenges. The Empire of Trebizond and Theodore's father-in-law, Alexios III, stood as formidable rivals in the quest for the Byzantine throne. In the backdrop of this chaotic ballet, Theodore, bearing the weight of legitimacy, proclaimed himself Emperor Theodore I Lascaris. However, an official anointment eluded him until 1208 CE when the exiled Patriarch of Constantinople, John Kamateros, bestowed the imperial mantle upon him. Nicaea, a jewel in Byzantine history, became the refuge for an empire in exile. With its opulent palaces, resounding churches, and a legacy spanning over a millennium, it stood as the ideal interim capital for a dream awaiting resurrection. The dance continued, Theodore faced challenges from within and beyond. David Megas Komnenos, a shadow from Trebizond, fell to Theodore's might, solidifying his claim. Yet, the jealous spectre of Alexios III, in collusion with the Turkish Seljuk Sultan Kai Khusraw I, cast its shadow over Nicaea. In the Battle of Antioch on the Meander, Theodore's forces triumphed, slaying the Seljuk Sultan. Alexios III languished in captivity, and the Latin Emperor Henry of Flanders sought advantage. Seizing the moment, Theodore expanded his reach, securing Trebizond's western territories after David Megas Komnenos' demise. A delicate balance ensued as Theodore and Henry crafted the Treaty of Nymphane in 1214 CE, a brief respite in the tumult, recognizing the Empire of Nicaea's legitimacy in the eyes of the Latins. The Empire of Nicaea, born from the ashes of Constantinople's fall, etched its name in the annals of Byzantine history. A phoenix in exile, Theodore's dream flickered with triumphs and tribulations, alliances and rivalries. The echoes of Nicaea's legacy reverberated until Michael VIII Polarlogos reclaimed Constantinople in 1261 CE, bridging the realms of exile and restoration. In the final act of its fateful journey, the Empire of Nicaea, once a Byzantine phoenix in exile, succumbed to the relentless march of the Ottoman Turks in 1453 CE. The curtain fell, but the whispers of its story lingered, a testament to the resilience of empires and the echoes that traverse the corridors of time. In the tapestry of time, where empires crumbled like ancient scrolls, Theodore's legacy in Nicaea became the foundation for a tale of resurgence. As the flames of his reign flickered away in 1222 CE, Theodore's son-in-law, John III Dukas Vatitsis, stepped into the spotlight. Little did the world know that under John's stewardship, the Empire of Nicaea would emerge as the phoenix destined to reclaim the Byzantine mantle. A symphony of succession, John III's rise. With Theodore's demise, John III ascended the throne, his gaze fixed on a grander vision. The echoes of his predecessors' struggles against the Latin Empire reverberated, setting the stage for a drama that would shape the fate of Byzantium. In a brief but intense succession dispute, John asserted his claim, becoming the heartbeat of Nicaea's existence. The stage was set for John's triumphant dance. Casting his gaze beyond Nicaea, he seized the initiative against the Latin Empire, proclaiming Asian territories and briefly cradling the jewel of Adrianople in Europe. Yet, 
The formidable shadow of Theodor Komnenos Dukas, despot of Epiros, loomed large, threatening to eclipse John's aspirations. Theodore's declaration as emperor echoed across the landscape, a challenge to Nicaea's dreams. The game tilted in John's favor when the Bulgarian Tsar Ivan Asin II emerged as a wild card. In a fateful clash at the Battle of Klokotnitsa, Ivan's forces crushed Theodore's armies, reshaping the political tableau. With Epiros weakened, John emerged as the torchbearer of Greek hopes, his destiny intertwined with the fate of Byzantium. John, a shrewd strategist, orchestrated a delicate dance of alliances. Joining forces with Ivan against the beleaguered Latin Empire, they carved out territories, signaling a shift in power. However, Ivan's allegiance wavered, and he pivoted to support the Latin Empire, teetering on the brink of collapse. The death of Ivan in 1241 CE marked a turning point. John, seizing the opportunity, reclaimed Byzantine territories in Europe, including the prized Thessalonica. His diplomatic web entangled the despotate of Epiros, now a vassal to Nicaea. With Constantinople within reach, John had deftly maneuvered the chess pieces of Epiros, Bulgaria, and the Latin Empire to position Nicaea as the torchbearer of Byzantium's resurgence. Amidst the dance of power, John turned his gaze inward, crafting a new vision for Nicaea. In Anatolia, where their roots ran deep, the Laskids ushered in economic reforms, nurturing the land's bounty. Agriculture flourished under John's watchful eye, as he lightened the tax burden, fostering prosperity. A cultural renaissance unfolded, as Nicaea evolved from a refuge to a beacon of Hellenistic learning. The Laskids, champions of education, kindled the flame of Greek identity, distinct from the Roman echoes of the past. Scholars like Nikiforos Blemides and George Acropolites graced the city's halls, marking the dawn of a new era. John's diplomatic prowess shone brightest in his alliance with Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor and King of Sicily. Bound by a common opposition to the papacy, their union became legendary. The friendship, a shield against external threats, elevated Nicaea's status in the eyes of Europe. Though strained under Frederick's successor, Manfred, this alliance immortalized John's reign in the annals of diplomacy. Guardians of the Gates, John's defense against the Mongol storm. In the face of Mongol tempests sweeping the east, John orchestrated a defensive ballet. Aligning with the Seljuks and the Empire of Trebizond, Nicaea formed a bulwark against the Mongol onslaught. While the Seljuks crumbled and Trebizond bowed in tribute, Nicaea's borders remained untouched, escaping the ravages that befell its neighbors. As the final curtain descended in 1254 CE, John III departed, leaving behind a legacy etched in Byzantine dreams. Revered as a saint, his reign was a symphony of triumphs and alliances, a prelude to the restoration of Byzantium. The phoenix, once a glimmer in Theodore's eye, now soared high, its wings brushing against the gates of Constantinople. The question lingered not if but when the empire of Nicaea would reclaim the Byzantine crown. As the curtains fell on John III's reign, a new chapter unfolded, guided by his successor, Theodore Tuliscarus. Theodore, though frail in body, possessed a mind adorned with the jewels of knowledge, having immersed himself in the teachings of luminaries like Blemides and Acropolites. In Theodore's symphony of reforms, he orchestrated the chords of fiscal prudence and military restructuring. With a sagacious touch, he elevated taxes to forge a formidable army of native Greek troops, dismantling the age-old reliance on foreign mercenaries. Two victorious campaigns against the Bulgarians and the reclamation of Dyrrhachian through strategic unions marked Theodore's rise. Amidst the chessboard of politics, Theodore navigated the Mongol threat with finesse, safeguarding Nicaea's borders against the tempest that consumed neighboring realms. However, fate wove a cruel tale, and Theodore's candle flickered out prematurely in 1258 CE. In the wake of Theodore's departure, the mantle passed to his young son, John IV Lascaris. An eight-year-old on the imperial throne, John's innocence belied the political storms that brewed. The formidable general Michael Poleologos seized the opportunity, ascending as co-emperor in 1259 CE. Michael's prowess on the battlefield crescendoed at the Battle of Pelagonia in 1259 CE, where a powerful alliance crumbled before his might. The despotate of Epiros, the Latin lords, and Manfred bowed before the resurgence of Nicaea. Lands were reclaimed, the spoils of victory embracing Michael's triumph, 
the yearning for Constantinople lingered in the Nicene heart, an elusive dream that Michael sought to materialize. The Treaty of Nymphium with Genoa, though a diplomatic ruse, became an insurance policy. In the shadows of history, Alexios Strategopoulos, Michael's general, tiptoed into the city's heart. In a moment shrouded in whispers, with the Latin Empire's gaze averted, Alexios reclaimed Constantinople. The dream that spanned generations, the silent quest for a lost capital, found its denouement. The Byzantine Empire, battered but resolute, rose from the ashes of Nicaea. As the banners of Nicaea bowed to the wind, Michael VIII entered Constantinople, proclaiming himself Emperor of the Romans. The Byzantine Empire, reborn but bearing the scars of adversity, stretched across the western Anatolian tapestry, Thrace, and fragments of Greece. The restored Byzantine Empire, under Michael's Paleologi dynasty, would script its tale for centuries, a testament to endurance. Yet, as the sun set on Nicaea, a poignant footnote lingered. John IV, the forgotten heir, was left in the shadows, a silent witness to the transition. Blinded at eleven, his story intertwined with the echoes of a fleeting empire. In the realm of history, the empire of Nicaea might be a minor note, a fleeting melody in the grand symphony of empires. Yet, within its walls, dreams were kindled, battles fought, and an indomitable spirit emerged. As Nicaea faded into the annals, the Byzantine Empire stood tall, a phoenix reborn from the embers of a forgotten capital. The legacy of Nicaea, a whisper in the winds of time, lived on in the shadows of the restored Byzantium.